Have you guys been anticipating the launch of Oud Maracuja from the house of Maison Crivelli? This one right here? So it's finally launched. It's selling everywhere. It was a limited edition at Selfridges, I believe. But now you can get it everywhere. You can go get your nose on it at retailers that sell Maison Crivelli. So I'm going to talk to you about uh, Oud Maracuja today from Maison Crivelli. But I'm doing it in a different way. I'm ranking a top 10 list here. Top 10 favorite fragrances of Maison Crivelli, which includes Oud Maracuja. So find out all about these coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, today I'm talking about Maison Crivelli fragrances and also Oud Maracuja, the latest launch from this house. It came in a blue bottle. This is the Extraits collection, whereas in the past, three of them came in an orange bottle like this. And then there's also this one in the brownish bottle, all Extraited Parfum concentration. And now there's also a green bottle. Same perfumer that created Oud Maracuja, Jordi Fernandez of Givaudan, has created a new fragrance called Oud Stallion. And I think that's also a limited edition somewhere. Since it's green, is it for Herod's? I'll have to find out later. But today it's all about uh, Maison Crivelli, a top 10 list. And also find out about Oud Maracuja and where that lands on the list. But let's go ahead and get started at number 10. It's Boise de Chai. Boise de Chai is that very dry, woody, autumn-like smell in a fragrance. It's featuring notes of cedar, black currant, black tea, cinnamon, incense, guyac wood, and patchouli. There's a very fall-like vibe when you wear this one, not only from the woods and the dryness, but also with the tea that's in here, the black tea note, gives you that kind of very cozy autumn-like vibe and some warm spice from the cinnamon in here as well. But it does have some black currant to brighten things up, a little incense to make things a little smoky, but it's an overdose of woods and earthy notes, some fruits, the black tea, again, it gives you that very, very cozy vibe and warm spices of cinnamon. Only other thing that I get from this one is a little bit of a cumin-like vibe when I'm wearing it, which I quite like. Uh, it creates a kind of a very interesting uh, wearing experience rather than just woods and everything else that's uh, mentioned. I get that kind of uh, very kind of spiked touches of the, the cumin note that comes up and I can kind of smell it when it's uh, there. Really great fragrance, but it is ranked at the bottom. But thankfully it made the top 10 because several did not make it. So Boise de Chai at number 10. This might kind of um, surprise you guys because uh, you'll see some of the more popular ones are not here. But anyway, number nine, it's Citrus Batikanga, this one right here. So a citrus fragrance that has multi layers. It starts off very fresh, very ice cold with the bergamot and bitter orange here. Definitely very citrusy, very juicy. And then you experience some chili. The chili heats things up. It is this transition of the chili between the citruses, the chili, and then to all the woods and the amber and the dry down. So it's a, fr a fresh fragrance, but it has some depth. And also it has the kind of like layers where you can go through different kind of sections of the fragrance. And then that transition with the chili kind of creates for a very interesting wear. And it's a, it's a citrus fragrance that has a lot of depth. It's not necessarily only citruses. It's got some things happening and makes for a very interesting wear. So if you're looking for some something very citrusy but with a lot of depth, definitely check out Citrus Batikanga, this one right here. All right, up next, we're talking about Fleur Diamantine at number eight, this one right here. Fleur Diamantine to me is a floral balm. To me, I get tuberose, but they mention jasmine and orange blossom as the notes. But for some reason, I'm getting a tuberose-like quality because it does remind me a little bit of something like Robert Piguet's Fraca. Because there's a little bit of a bubble gumminess I'm getting here that I get with Fraca, whereas with Fraca, it's an overdose of bubble gumminess and major dosage of tuberose. Here, it's light and it's blended with the jasmine and orange blossom to create a kind of a white floral bouquet. But along with those notes, you get mint, oak moss, saffron, and coumarin. And in the end, it's just kind of like the citrus. It becomes more deeper and denser uh, as it's drying down, but you've got all this very fresh white floral, you know, experiences with all the different notes up there. So as I said, just jasmine and orange blossom, but I definitely get a bit of a tuberosey touch in here to create that kind of bubble gumminess. Very light on the bubble gum, and it's not necessarily like Fraca. If you're familiar with Fraca, that's a bubble gum overdose. This one's kind of on the light side. So Fleur Diamantine is at number eight. Next, it's a fragrance called Lee Solaberg. This one right here at number seven. So if you're into Ambroxan and you haven't heard about this one, definitely check it out. It's Ambroxan Bomb, but with a bu bunch more complexity. Sometimes when I see fragrances that feature Ambroxan, 
they don't have complexity because they're basically just focusing on the ambroxan and they're adding some things in here just to kind of accentuate the uh, ambroxan but there's a lot going on in here so it's ambroxan with lily and the lily is really really prominent here it works really beautifully with the ambroxan they're throwing in calamus for that kind of very interesting succulent green kind of a note oak moss wine leaves quince iris, dried fruits, patchouli, all of these come in, adds really, really unique twists and turns. The quince is a note that's kind of coming up quite a bit lately. I really like this note. If you've ever smelled the flowers, amazing smell. If you've ever smelled the fruits, also an amazing smell. Don't eat the fruits though. They're kind of bitter to eat. You have to cook them and make them into jam. But it's here to add some sweetness here along with the dried fruits. It's fruity quince, dried fruits and things like that. Really great addition to all this ambroxan and lily and calamus up top. So this is Lee Solaberg at number seven. And then we've got the fragrance Absinthe Boreal, this one right here at number six. What an ice cold fragrance this is. If I, I recently featured this in a juniper berry gin and uh, gin tonic juniper berry juniper gin video and it's also been featured in ice cold fragrances for me this is a very ice cold fragrance it's inspired by tasting absinthe under the northern lights but for me the focus note here is juniper berries and that artemisia creates that kind of absinthe like quality to create this very ice cold experience here but juniper berries and artemisia are prominent here you also have lavender eucalyptus mint and lemon it's fresh it's spicy it's aromatic it's ice cold it's refreshing and invigorating wear it in the heat of the summer you'll really really be invigorated with this one and then also it's kind of like a modern take on a fougere like it's very fougere like qualities with the notes that are in here really great fragrance absinthe boreal this is from the house of maison crevelli that's at number six then we're moving on to number five with neroli nasimba this one right here so this was a recent launch from earlier this year rather than the x Traits collection. This is in the regular collection. Obviously everything that I've spoken about so far are in the regular collection. And Neroli Nasimba is quite a great release from this house. One of my favorite in the regular collection next to another one in the top five. There's only two in the top five. But this is Neroli Orange Blossom utilizing the, the flower of the citrus tree, the orange blossom, in two different ways, Neroli and Orange Blossom. But there's also Pettigran here, the leaves of the bitter orange tree to create a very citrusy effect. But this fragrance starts off very fresh. You might think it's kind of like Neroli Portofino because they're using those notes that are in that. But this fragrance develops to become a very leathery fragrance, getting darker and deeper and richer, amberier and spicier. So yeah, this is leather, vetiver, cystus, absolute, mandarin orange, cardamom and pink pepper. So mandarin orange to provide you that whole juicy touch along with the neroli orange blossom and the pentagram, but everything else is just a dark fragrance. It does get major leathery here with the vetiver and of course an amberier touch. I really, really like this one. A great take on a neroli focused fragrance. It's called Neroli Nasimba takes you through an adventure and going into a dark territory, starting off very, very fresh. So it's Neroli Nasimba at number five. All right, next is at number four, and it is Oud Maracuja, this one right here, the latest launch from this house. And have you gotten your nose on this one? I actually spoke about it in a video recently. I enjoy this Oud, as I've been mentioning in other videos that I'm kind of bored of Oud. If it's only Oud wood or woods and Oud, it becomes really, really boring. I want some, you know, something against the oud to get me excited to wear the oud because oud can get boring all by itself. And this one has loads of fruitiness with the passion fruit and the belia. There's a leathery touch from saffron and there's some floral touches of Turkish rose. The Turkish rose really blends beautifully with obviously the oud note. Of course here in this case also blends really beautifully with the fruity notes. But in addition to those notes you've got Indonesian patchouli, benzoin, leather, amber, vanilla, labdanum, akigala wood. There's that word akigala wood. That is that kind of proprietary ingredient from Givaudan that uh, Givaudan perfumers use. And I see that Jordi Fernandez, who created this, uses this note quite a bit. I really like this kind of cleaned up patchouli note that's in here, and it really does contribute really nicely with this fragrance. But for me, it's a really great combination of passion fruit, fruitiness, rosy touches, and oud. Really great fragrance, I think. Job well done and definitely wearable. So it's oud maracuja at number four. Up next, it is patchouli magnetic. Probably the most beast mode fragrance in this whole entire collection. Really, really an intense fragrance. And if you spray this in a small room, the smell will stay there for a long time. It's a room filler for sure. 
Uh, not as much as followed, but this one does fill a room. And I also get compliments with this one. I don't think a lot of people like this one, maybe because it's so overwhelming. It's really, really overwhelming. But I really enjoy it because of the patchouli and also because it has a very cozy factor. It's very creamy, lactonic, milky, with a kind of a milkiness that's running throughout the fragrance. Perhaps it's the gardenia that's creating it, sandalwood maybe. There's also a bit of frangipani in here, but in addition to those notes, don't forget the patchouli. Patchouli is really, really in your face in this one. Benzoin, white peach vanilla leather really really great stuff you got to be into patchouli and you've got to be into this kind of a fragrance really really enjoy this one love wearing it long long lasting and of course compliments so patchouli magnetic at number three and then at number two ingredients 072012 so I want to say, first off, this is an exclusive fragrance created for a store in Prague. You can buy the fragrance off the Maison Crivelli website or at this store. But I'm hoping that they would launch this everywhere because this is too good to not. Really too good to not. Because this deserves to be launched. I get, oh, the other thing is that there's no notes credited here. It's a surprise. But personally, I get saffron, dry woody touches, grassy vetiver, light fruits, some amber and leather perhaps. You know, this is the kind of stuff I pick up with it. The saffron, I think, is what's creating leather. So that's the kind of leather I get, the kind I like. Really fabric-y kind of smelling, spicy kind of smelling leather. But it's got all those grassy, woody touches with the vetiver. And of course, there's this fruitiness and a bit of amber thrown in there as well. Who knows, there might be ambroxan in there. I don't know, but this stuff is amazing. I really, really love it. And hopefully you guys get your get your nose on it. It's ingredients 072012 from Maison Crivelli. And then my number one favorite is Iris Molly Khan. Still is. This is... Really, really wonderful offering from this house. Still is since 2020. Really love the orris butter in here and the contrast with the vanilla. Leather in here as well. And the galbanum. Galbanum is super amazing in this. Very green, very bitter. Contrasts beautifully with that buttery orris butter. There's definitely a buttery texture here when you're wearing this fragrance. Mixed with the vanilla, it creates that. But there's also mastic resin here. There's amber, mimosa, cypress, and musks. Best from this house. And the perfumer, I forgot the name. I've never seen him do anything else, but he's created such a great fragrance here uh, that I, I can't get enough of. I love this stuff. It's still my favorite, although the others are kind of creeping in, trying to take over the number one spot from Iris Molly Khan. We'll see how long it lasts, but this stuff, it is the best from this house, and I can't get enough of it. So let me know if you're a fan of Iris Molly Khan, and do you share my love for it? It's definitely the best from this house. I really love it, but ingredients is very close. Patchouli Magnetic is, I think, solidly put at the number three spot. Um, Oud Maracuja for sure at number four. Definitely something something I can really wear. And then Neroli Nasimba, really great fragrance, really wonderful offering. So there's some really great fragrances from this house. I hope you guys get to try. Let me know your top five or top three, depending on how many fragrances you have. I'd like to find out. And uh, how would you have ranked my list? Yeah, put that down. How would you rank it? Anyway, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. All right, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Oud Stallion. It is uh, something that I think is limited edition, and I have a feeling since it is green, it's a Harrods exclusive. I'm not 100% sure about it. I haven't searched. But as of the airing of this video, I probably would have hit Harrods and find out if it is over there or what the deal is if I see the brand and everything. But Oud Stallion is created by Jordi Fernandez. It has notes of leather, Oud, Tonka, nutmeg, cardamom, patchouli, saffron, Turkish rose, osmanthus, jasmine, cedar. Sounds like it's going to be more animalic, right? What do you guys think? This one versus Oud Maracuja because they're both created by the same perfumer. This one's going to be the easier to wear and the other one might be a little darker, more leathery or maybe animalic as well. But definitely I want to get my nose on that one. If anybody knows what it smells like, put a comment down below so I can find out. All right, so after that, I want to talk to you about the fragrances that did not make the list. So we've got Rose Saltifolia, Hibiscus Mahajad, Ambre Chromatique, Osmanth Kodoshan, Papyrus Molecular, Molecular Santal Volcanique. So Rose Saltifolia probably would have made the number 11 spot. I'm telling you that. After that, it becomes really difficult. I think at number 12, I would have put Santal Volcanique. Papyrus Molecular, to me, reminds me too much of Le Labo's uh, 
Santal 33. So that one probably ranked at the very bottom. But Hibiscus Mahajad and Ambra Chromatik, I'm not a big fan of either. And then there's Osmanth Kodoshan left, which I'm also not that big of a fan of. So the rest of the fragrances, I can't really decide where to put, but if you're a fan of these fragrances, what it is, what is it about these fragrances that you really like? And the thing I don't get is how much of a popularity Hibiscus Mahajad has in comparison to Patchouli Magnetic. I don't consider it anything special. I don't really care for it that much. I've tried really to like it. To me, it smells medicinal and some strange combo of fruitiness. But with Patchouli Magnetic, even though there's some familiarity about it, I much prefer that over the Ambre Chroma Chromatique or even Hibiscus Mahajad. And Ambre Chromatique, as far as an amber goes, is very resinous and not necessarily sweet. I want some sweetness with it. So I just didn't do it for me either. So th that's why these are kind of at the bottom of the list. And uh, definitely the numbers 1 through 10 here are my favorites. And sadly, these are at the bottom. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. See you guys later. Bye-bye.